Um, I was recently having a discussion about LLMs, large language models, and reasoning, and kind of claims out whether they can or can't reason. Um, one of the things that came up was this kind of puzzle. Uh, this kind of puzzle is a logic puzzle. You might have encountered these before. Uh, the idea is like, oh, there's these people, Alice, Bethany, Carla, E, and Denise. They each have a favorite kind of ice cream and a topping, and then you have these rules. and um, once you go through these rules, you can identify exactly who it is. And so there's a lot of like inference and, and other kind of logical things. So it's like logical reasoning. Um, it's very, it's very specific in some ways and has its own kind of like language and expectation. I don't think people necessarily know how to do these automatically. Um, I did do an initial, I took one, a simple one and put it into uh, GPT first. This is the basic setup. Um, and I kind of gave it some guidance about how I wanted it to go through things like here, oh, we know Alacosta could be worth any of these things, right? In the beginning, there's no constraints. Um, and then I fed it rules one by one and had it revise those until it, um, could come up with a solution. So this took me a couple tries, um, to get the prompt right and to give it the right guidance about how to approach the problem. Um, and then eventually... I was able to get it to correctly finish this puzzle. Uh, but, you know, it, it, it was kind of grinding. Not, and not everything that it said was correct if you go through this here. Um, and so, yeah, what, what, is, what does it mean to be good at logic puzzles uh, or about reasoning or something? Um, a lot of these like involve kind of like different kinds of inference and stuff and, and how much instruction. Uh, so that got me thinking. I've been wanting to do something using. You know, at first, I wanted to use a SAT solver, which is a, a kind of Boolean logic solver. We can give it a complicated expression, and it'll um, solve it. But after looking at that and being a little unimpressed with that, I came upon Z3, which seems to be popular. It also has a language. Surprisingly, many of these logic provers um, don't have direct languages. Um, it's, you can tell it's not uh, the most, <laughs> uh, it's very functional. It's written by math people, you can kind of tell. Um, but it has a language like this where you, you say like, here's a variable, um, we'll mostly use, you can have it be like an integer or a Boolean and then you make declarations. And then once you make declarations, you can, you can find out if it's true, like this is a true statement potentially and you can find out if you have a unique solution and such. Um, and so I decided to have an LLM write code and then execute that code. And so in some ways, while the LLM wouldn't be fully solving it, uh, the combination of the LLM and the solver would solve these puzzles. Um, so this is just one that the, someone had directed me to um, that has these, I'm gonna get we're going to start out with something simple. And so the, I've, I've set up a kind of, kind of a pipeline, I guess. Um, it does have a fair amount of prompting. So I can't say like it knows how to do these things without prompting, but um, I'm going to have it parse this stuff. It comes in a little bit crudely. And here are the rules that that define it. So uh, first we'll parse it. Right now I'm using GPT-40. And so there are four fratern fraternities, they live on four streets, and they have four different numbers of members, and here are the rules. So that's all set up. That's, that's the first prompt. And now I'm going to um, run the first stage of this. You can see this is quite quite a bit of prompting leading up to this. Um, I'll switch this to the regular mode so you can just see. Here's all I give some examples about how to set this up. Um, it knows about Z3, but it's not like great at Z3. Or uh, technically, uh, this is like SMT lib is the language. It's kind of a, a Lisp-like language. Um, and and there's different ways to model these problems. And I actually didn't know in the beginning the best way to model it and kind of came upon this pattern, which I then prompted for. Um, 
part of why I started with a prompt is because I did not actually know, and so I wanted, <laughs> wanted it to tell me how to model things. Uh, so the way it works here, there's fraternity streets, members. Then you say like, okay, what street is beta phi, beta pi omega on? What street is this one on? How many members does beta pi omega have? And then the building on this street, how many members does it have, right? So it's very similar essentially to this grid, right? So it has these different, like here's the streets and the numbers and, 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 and these things. So um, on top of that, then you have to say like, oh, they each are on a different street. That's one of the like basic things about how these games work. They each have a different number of members. Then also the street has a distinct number of members. And then you have to like relate these, right? So if beta pi omega is on uh, Graydon Avenue, and if it has 23 members, then the house on Graydon Avenue has 23 members, right? So if we say, if if you're on Graydon Avenue, then the number of members on Graydon Avenue is the same as the number of me members in beta pi omega. So this is the basic logic setup. Um, this could totally be, be done programmatically. Uh, said I didn't know how to how it should be set up to start with and eventually I want to think about like how to expand this like a, there's a lot that's very specific to this one kind of puzzle uh, but maybe you know maybe there's other things um, so what happens is then we look through all the source turn that into one source file we send it to s to z3 this says it's satisfiable and then this says how it is satisfied um, and we can we can see that a little bit more nicely formatted, right? So here it is. Now it's easy. There's lots of ways to satisfy it in the beginning uh, because we haven't given any rules. And and here it says it's not unique. So the way we test that it's not unique is we actually send this entire source code here um, to it, and then say also make sure that not all of these things are true. Theta delta members is in 23 and it, the whole combination is not true. So is there another distinct solution? And if it can come up with another distinct solution, which it does, um, then there's at least two solutions and there's actually like, you know, a gajillion solutions here. Uh, so now we're going to go through the second prompt, um, which is much more specifically about rules. So this first prompt is like the setup. The second prompt, we give it the setup. Um, and this again is, very involved, but then we have a bunch of rules about how to handle these things. So we give it, um, that's the response, but we give it, here's the rules. The frat on Shelley Lane has three fewer members in the fraternity on Joseph Street and so on, and have it create a response. So we'll go down here. Here's the response. And I've asked it to go through these things and think them through, right? So it goes through and, and generates this code in pieces. Um, and I've given it specific questions because it needs to do that. Is there an either or condition? Um, it turns out when we say, uh, you know, one of these things is on this or on this, we actually mean uh, exclusive or. In other words, they both aren't true. Only one of those two things is true. So it has naturally, um, it will translate that, that to or, but it should translate it to XOR. Uh, and then one of the tricks in these problems is they're always referring to two different things. Um, in a subtle way that means uh, these are not the same thing. Um, so the fraternity on Shelley Lane has fewer members than the fraternity on Joseph Street. Because um, these are both on streets, we already know that they have different. And we're not using real numbers here. We're, we're only using like, these are essentially symbols. So it has to figure out that like 26 is less than, is three less than 20. Or, you know, 23 is 3 less than 26 and so on. It has to put these in the right order. It has to assemble this right. Um, I have given it specific guidance on how to do that kind of um, assembly. Uh, let's see. This one's very simple. 23 members. Beta pi omega is on Tamarack Street. Very straightforward. This is a very simple problem. Um, now, as we continue down through here, we see... Uh, Phi Beta Omega is either the house with 26 members or the fraternity on Joseph Street. This is where you need that XOR because it or will mean that it could be both of those things. And 
that's not what this states. Um, so that that comes up with some source. There's a complete source, and which is just stripped out of there, um, and a specific solution. And then what happens is it. Uh, I don't show the source here, but you know, again, tries to invert the solution and make sure that it's unique. And we have a checking prompt, um, which is there because well, this this is like true from the, like a logical perspective. Um, it could be that the these things encoded incorrectly. Um, something about the problem. So it goes through, make sure everything is unique. Uh, it goes through each rule. Um, these are. I had to make sure that it reiterated the, the statements. Uh, it would sometimes kind of like jump to a conclusion too quickly otherwise. So again, like in this prompt, there's also, you know, a little bit of instructions about how to go through these rules um, before it does, and it's all correct. All right, so um, I'm gonna clear all these and we're gonna try a much harder puzzle. So we're, let's go to here and we'll be challenging. Uh, challenging, I think, means the rules are maybe less obvious. Um, oops. All right, let me try to copy that again. There we go. You see, like, this doesn't actually, it, it's kind of really rough how this copies out. But combined with the story and some of the other things, the, the parser is always just fine at this. And then we'll go and get the clues. All right, we'll parse this. And we'll go into the solver. And I'm just going to run this and come back. All right, we're all done. Um, if you look at it, it sees three here, so it's you know a minute and thirty seconds about um, to run all the all three prompts. Uh, this first one took extra long because it is a uh, it has a lot to do with how long the output is, and and it's just a lot of output. Uh, if you look at this, it this is not it's not right. <laughs> it's it's mixing up some things here. Um, the definition of the puzzle actually I. I told it not to use integers and only to use symbols, and it, and it didn't do that. I'm not sure. That probably will be fine, though. You know, some of these things are definitely not fine. There's just no. I don't know why this is. Um, <laughs> what? This doesn't even mean anything. Uh, so this is a special operator. It's the um, implies. So it means if this thing is true, then this thing must be true. So if the Den year is 1653, then this must be true, but it's true. So it's always true. It means nothing. Uh, this is a, a logical operation that means some, something here. We never use it in programming. Uh, you can express the same thing with like a, a not and an and or something. Um, it's kind of funny because it makes sense in this logical thing, but it just doesn't elsewhere. Uh, and if you look at the output, it was like, oh, it has all these issues with the source. So if you look at line four, it doesn't doesn't like that. Um, it's, yeah, it, it OK, not not good. Um, this didn't work out either, the solution. Um, I don't know, I'm going to I'm going to go back. I'm going to try to get the first parser fixed and then go through. And then I'm going to compare once I get this a little bit closer to working, I'm going to compare this to um, Claude, Claude Sonnet 3.5, um, because I think that's an interesting comparison. OK, I rerun the first two steps with Claude. Um, see, it got the years right. I specifically said do not just use numbers um, at that stage. And then here, uh, you'll see it has a family, town, and year, and then goes through all these correctly. The stinks are all look pretty reasonable and also it just it just did that all correctly no error messages not unique that's expected um, down here because we've 
change some of the variables, this is no longer valid. Um, but I'm going to redo this one with Claude as well. Okay, let's look through um, Claude's interpretation of these rules. So the windmill in Kinderdijk was built 23 years before the other one. Um, so it has this pretty standard thing that both of them are pretty decent about doing. Uh, West Mullen was built 26 years after Zemmel Mullen. Um, and I think these are actually not, not necessary, but it's putting that in there. So again, all the valid combinations. Uh, that one's simple. This is another kind of straightforward one. Uh, this one, you'll see the five structures. This one is one that it's I've seen elsewhere and it also got this incorrect. Um, it doesn't doesn't really make sense. I, I suspect that this is kind of a bonus rule and you don't need this rule in order to solve it. Um, but uh, another year one. This is easy. This one's easy. Easy, easy. So most of them it got right. Uh, came up with a solution. It got that one wrong. It's still a unique thing. This is an error message just because I asked for the solution, but there is no solution because I eliminated the solution and there's no additional solution. So let's uh, we'll redo the check and and see that it worked well. Um, so again, like I, I feel like I've taught it some very specific rules. And it does interpret those, like it it figures out like how the story intersects with some of these rules and does that all correctly. Um, but uh, um, how general is this, right? Um, you know, how, how general is this setting up of a logical domain? And how general is understanding rules and being able to do this? On the other hand, how general is that for people? Um, you know, we, we treat this as though it's like a normal thing to do, but these, like this grid puzzle is something you have to learn how to do. Uh, my, the company I work for has a, has a lesson on this. This is not sponsored by Brilliant, but we do have a lesson even um, because these, these rules like have these like implicit things you have to, to understand. Um, so like, there's a question how much, how much setup, um, but I will say, uh, Claude Sonnet is impressively better than GBT 4.0 on this. Like this is, it didn't, when I had the different prompts that didn't work as well, um, it also didn't work as well, but I was able to prompt it and, and get it to understand things much more uh, successfully. And, and it's like ability to be thorough in its response is considerably better, um, right? Like um, when we do the setup, GPT-4 would often leave things off. Um, so more thorough, more accurate, keeps track of instructions better. Um, you know, in, in other tasks, I haven't been like, I haven't seen it as greatly different, but in this task, it has been uh, impressive. So yeah, the next direction I might wanna think about is like, okay, now, now that I know a little bit more about Z3, and say like, okay, here I've taught it like one very specific kind of puzzle. Can can it solve other logic puzzles? Um, and what what kind of like setup and understanding does it need to have? Um, you know, this this language is not like super well known, so we do have to tell it like some of how it works. It doesn't know a bunch, but like there are details about and expectations, right? It makes assumptions that are not correct for this specific language sometimes. Um, so what do we have to tell it to give it enough to be able to understand how to solve some other problems? Um, and then we might ask, is an LLM plus Z3 capable of reasoning? Uh, maybe, <laughs> you know, if it's, it's, it's is this reasoning? Um, I think a lot of people want reasoning to be magical. And so if you actually implement a mechanism for reasoning, then you can no longer can say it's reasoning because instead it's just going through a mechanism. Um, but I don't know. Uh, maybe I will have another video with something like that.